It's creating objects with data and functionality bundled together. So it's doing its fundamental job. Line one, let's see it do its job. Skylar, what are we doing in line one? So we're creating a function user creator. User creator. With the parameters name and score. Perfect, there it is, there's the function. Next line, Z. Um, we are declaring a variable called user1. Yeah, user1, excellent. Now, do we know what's going to be stored in it yet? Undefined. Undefined, because it's going to be the return value, right, of calling what? Uh, user creator. Yeah, user1 will be the return value of calling user creator with what argument, Z? Will and three. Perfect, will and three. All right. I can't believe I still have my name on this. <laughs> I wrote this slide years ago. Uh, all right, so we create everybody. This will feel good. Create a new execution, execution context. context. Perfect. All right, yeah. there it is. Execution context, and in we go. And what's the first line of code say to do inside of this execution context? Or well, the first thing we do, we want to handle first, Lewis, inside the execution context. Um, we have a parameter name, or we're assigning the variable will. Yeah, the we'll argument. The argument will. Yep. And then we have the uh, parameter score, and it's going to be the argument. Great, now we enter the body of the function. What's the first thing you say to do? We're going to create an object new user. Yeah. That's object literal. Yeah, good. And assign it what properties? Um, property name with the value of will. Yeah, the name argument, right? Yeah. So, new user, that exists. It's an empty object. Dot name says add a property name and have assigned to it the name um, argument, the name argument that was stored in memory at the point which we fill the name argument in with will. So don't confuse the name here and the name here. The name on the left hand side is a new property we're creating. The name on the right hand side is referring to and retrieving from memory the argument with the value will. Okay, good. Keep me going. Um, uh, Philip? Oh, okay. Lewis? Uh, we're creating a property score with the value of 3. Yep. And then we're creating a method called increment with the function definition. Perfect. And final line of the function? Uh, we're returning the new user object. We are returning the new user object returned out to global into global memory, where it is stored in what global variable? User1. User1. There it is. Perfect. So now user1 gets filled in, no longer undefined, gets filled in with this object name, will score 3 and increment is a function. We've achieved the same thing we did when we hand wrote the object, but now we did it with just a single line, user creator function being called and returning out an object. Perfect. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire next one, but we've now returned out to global, where the next line is what, Philip? The next line is declaring a user to, right. setting it equal to, um, calling user creator, passing in 10 and 5. Yeah, so it's going to be set to equal to the evaluated return, or the return value of user creator called with the arguments Tim and 5. And that's going to return out, I'm not going to create the entire execution context, but it's going to return out what? An object with a property name, yeah. Tim, score 3, and then an increment function right? yeah. method. A brand new, all of these were created inside of user creator, just like this, but we're just not going to copy it all over again. Everyone clear on that? We've gone inside next. We created an execution context. We didn't do all the stuff inside of it, but it's all being done and out returned this object into global memory under the label user2. Name Tim, score 5, and increment is a function. And so now we're going to test can we do the thing that makes our lives as developers so effortless? Can we do it? Lewis, can I do user2.increment being invoked? Talk me through it. If I can do my key test of whether my code is doing its job. Talk me through this process. So first you're going to look for user2, which is an object. Then you're going to in global, in global memory. memory, perfect. And you're going to, you're going to look for the increment property. And is it there? It is there. And it's a function, so I can right. successfully execute my function code. Fantastic. My job is done. My job is done. I've nothing more to do. 
I'm generating objects containing data of functionality attached. And I can run my function on my data. Am I happy? No. Z, why am I not happy? Because you're making the same function for every single object. He's spot on. He's exactly right. This is a beautiful s benefit. It's not a beautiful solution. This is not a beautiful solution. It's a simple solution. It's not beautiful. This is a simple solution. But it's fundamentally unusable. We can never, we will never ever use this solution ever in practice. This solution returns our objects, each of which have a brand new increment function defined on them. Now, I'm not going to have one function attached to each user object. I'm going to have 100, 500. I want to be able to add login functionality, log out functionality, render user. Um, I don't know. I want to be able to just do anything I want. And each of them is going to have a copy of that function. Maybe it's you know, 100 lines in the function, 50 lines in the function, and I've got 100 functions, and I've got 10,000 users. I'm at you know, 50 million lines, completely wasting the space. when. Now, don't get me wrong, Will3, Tim5, they're, they're different. I need to take separate space for each of them. But these guys are not. These functions are exactly the same, and yet each time we create a new user, we make space in our computer's memory for all our data. Great. And functions, but our functions are just copies. Is there a better way? What will be a better way, intuitively, Lewis, to somehow not have a copy of each function, the function on each object. What would be an intuitive, better way of doing it? Um, perhaps creating an object that holds all your functions. Ah, an object that holds all my functions, single copies of them, exactly. And then somehow, when I hit user two dot increment, uh, no to go looking, and it turns out JavaScript gives us a, a built-in feature to do exactly that. Anyone know what it's called? Don't shout out the title of the talk. Yeah, yeah good. We'll talk about it in a second. All right. Solution two is going to be store that increment function, all the functions we want each of these objects to have access to on the, on the, dot, on the right hand side of the dot as kind of methods in just one object and have the interpreter, that's the JavaScript engine as it runs through our code. If it doesn't find the function increment on user two, on user one, doesn't find it on here. There, it's not here. Doesn't find it. Somehow, it knows to go and look, let's call it function store, in some shared object where increment is happily sitting around. Somehow it knows to go looking there. How to make that link? JavaScript gives us a built-in feature of its own design that lets us make somehow a link to the shared function store. So the JavaScript can automatically go look up there without any sort of um, process from us. It's going to go looking up there automatically without us having to specify go look there. Well, we will, but not at the, mo not at the moment that the, the line gets run. And how does it do it? It uses a feature of JavaScript known as the prototype chain. This bond is going to be called a prototypal, a prototypal bond. It's going to be a chain link up to here using this feature of JavaScript called the prototype chain that's going to ensure when it does not find increment on user two, it doesn't panic, it knows to go looking on function store. Where what does it find? But the increment function. So how's that going to work? How to make that link? The prototype chain. Using the prototypal nature of JavaScript. Here it is at solution two in full. We're going to walk through it line by line and we're going to discover a way to make some bond to this shared function store. All right. Okay. Here we go. Line onesie. <laughs> Some of the word onesie. Line onesie. <laughs> Line onesie. Oh, we're declaring a function call user creator. <laughs> That was very professional. Line one Z, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Good. Line one Z. We declare a function user creator, spot on. There it is, user creator. Excellent stored in global memory. Line two, Mijun. We're declaring a variable called user function 
store. Okay, nice. Use a function store. And we're assigning an object. Perfect. Into which we're storing? Uh, let's see, the property increment. Which is? It's a function that increments the score. Yeah. And another function called login. Perfect. Excellent. There it is. Use function store. All right. Next line, Lewis. So we're declaring a variable user one, global memory. Yeah. Saying it to the return value of running user creator with the argument well. Perfect. So it's undefined for now, and it's going to be the return value of running user creator with the input of will, the arguments will, and three. Create everybody and Ex execution, execution context. context. Perfect. Ooh. Beautiful. It was mellifluous. Here we go. And in we go. And Philip, what's the first thing we do inside? We um, take care of our uh, parameters. We yeah. set name equal to will yeah. and score equal to three. Very good. And then the next line. Oh, now it gets interesting. What's this first line in the body of the function tell us to do? What's new user going to be after this very first line, Philip? It's going to be an object. Absolutely. And new user, here it is, new user is equal to object dot create pass in whatever for some reason we're passing in this function this user function store who knows why we'll find out in a minute what does this return out fundamentally philip an empty object an empty object we're going to discover it has some hidden properties but it is fundamentally an empty object that gets assigned to what philip new user new user excellent there it is next line skylar so we're going to access that new user object yep. and add a key name equal to the argument passed in name for score. Very right, well put, Skylar, yep. And then do the same for score, so that we get three. OK. And then, final line of the function? We're going to return. We're going to return the value of new user, the object, into what global variable? Into new we're user calling user, yeah. into user one. We're calling yeah. user creator. It returns out this new user object or this object that was formerly known as a user into the global variable user one. Perfect. Thank you, Skylar. Can we do our all hallowed thing of running on user one the all important increment functionality? Can we do this? Talk me through it, Mijin. Left-hand side first, where do I look? So on the user1 object itself. Yeah, do I find the increment function? Uh, not directly. No, I do not. Huh. 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 Hmm. 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 Anyone got any idea? Why would we do so much and then it fail? Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Turns out that when we declared that empty object, we made a special bond. Before we returned out to user one, we made a special bond to user function store. When I ran, when I created my empty object using this object.create. Uh, method and pass in user function store it was saying make sure this object stored in new user gets somehow a special bond to this user function store object over here where increments sitting happily there's a special little bond over there meaning when I return out this new user into user one that special bond and don't get this confused with other special bonds we have like the uh, you know, the other ones from closure or other areas. This is a different one. It's called a special bond up to that user function store. Meaning, Mijun, talk me through what actually happens here. So it's going to find, um, well, it's going to look in that special place. Okay. The underscore proto underscore. Well, we're going to come to that in a second. Okay. And up it goes to, to this user <laughs> yes. function store where it finds. It does find the increment function. Increment, and it's ready to run it. And executes it, creates. An execution context, exactly, to run that code.